Hello and welcome to the phone burner walkthrough. I want to walk you through our new system and kind of help you get this account set up and running quickly. Right here we're looking at the home page. This is what you would see when you first log in. That gives you kind of a, uh, a bird's eye view or an overview of what you've been doing recently in your account. The call activity section, that's going to show you what you've been doing for the last couple of weeks. You can see in this test account I've made a few phone calls over the last couple of weeks. Um, under recent activity you can see uh, what you've done in more detail uh, calls made email sent and what's new is we actually track emails that are open so you'll see calls were made emails were sent and emails were open so we're actually tracking the emails that are open so you can see which of your contacts are opening them and then over here you've got your account snapshot this is uh, an overview of everything you've ever done with the account total number of sessions total number of contacts you've called live answers email sent voicemails and that's for the lifetime of the account um, next we're going to go to dial sessions because I want to show you how to uh, set up a voicemail uh, so you click on the dial sessions tab then click on the dial session settings this will take you to your settings page where you can access all of your different settings options first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on voicemail recordings this is where you go to record a voicemail for your account. You can record multiple voicemails. Now there's two options for recording a voicemail. Option one is using your phone uh, just like you would when you're uh, when you record a greeting for your cell phone you call in you enter your pin you follow the prompt. So it's very simple if you've ever recorded a voicemail greeting then you're gonna have no problem here. If you have an mp3 file you can just upload it here. Once you've done either one of those then you'll see your voicemail listed down here you can preview it, you can click the little play button, you can delete it, you can download it as an mp3 if you want to have a copy of it on your computer. So that's the basics of recording a voicemail, very simple, very straightforward. Let's go back to the settings page. Okay, so now let's talk about how to create a new email or create emails. If we click on the message library link, That'll take us to our message library, and uh, you'll see any anything that you've created, any phone scripts, any emails, anything like that. But we're going to talk about OneTouch emails because that's where you create your emails. We're going to click on the Add New OneTouch Email. That'll open up a new email. Uh, the contact category types. We're always going to select all categories. Well, and unless you, uh, you know, just plan on always clicking on all categories. One touch email name. This is for your eyes only. So let's say we're going to do this for interested people. So we'll call this one interested. And the subject is it was nice talking to you. A description. Enter a short description. And then we have our message. Hi, John. Although rather than saying John, we're going to want to use a uh, merge code to insert the recipient's first name. And then we'll let a comma space. And uh, it was great talking to you. Here is my website. And we want to add our website. And in the new system, you can actually add up to 10 custom. Uh, custom fields. So I'm going to use personal code number one because this is the one I've added my website to. So I add that and I'm going to go uh, click here for my site. Insert that and then thank you for your time and let's close with my name I can put in the sender's first name, space, sender's last name. And then maybe I want to put my phone number underneath that. So sender's phone number, boom. Now I can save that. I can preview it. Look here for my website. That takes me to phoneburner.com. Um, so we're done there. So I'll go ahead and and go to emails and scripts and you'll see our new email interested is listed there. Um, let me show you real quickly where you go to add those those personal customization things. So I'm going to go to my account 
on the My Account page, I'm going to go to the Personal Customization Codes, and you'll see I added PhoneBurner.com here. So you can add up to 10 personal customization codes. These can be whatever you want, whether you know, whether it's a website or you know whatever whatever you want to put in there. Um, most of you will probably just use one or two, but um, we've had some people that have wished to have more. We only had, I think, four or five in the previous system, so a lot more, a lot more options on this system now. So that's how you create an email. Once you've created the email, though, now you need to tell the system when to use the email. So we're going to go to back to dial sessions, back to settings, and we're going to go to disposition sets. Uh, disposition, disposition sets is now where you would go to update uh, the emails that are sent uh, based off the buttons you press. So for example, when you press the leave voicemail button in a dial session, the system can send an email. The email it sends is determined by the settings of that button. So we're going to go over and edit this button. We can change the name of the button. We can change the disposition. We can change this, the note that the system adds when it uh, when it when that button is pressed uh, and then we can change the follow-up email so you'll notice that all of our emails are listed here we only have three emails right now in this account we've got our VM email our busy signal email and our interested email we can also move a contact from one category to another by uh, you know based off the button that's pressed um, we can set the next action do we want the system to call the next contact, the next phone number, if there is another phone number on the contact, or do you want the system to ask you whether to call the next contact or phone number? Uh, we can also tell the system to add this contact to a do not call or delete the contact. So anyway, those are your, some of your settings for editing a button, but really the most important one is making sure that you get the appropriate email set up for each of your buttons. So. We just created the interested but, uh, interested email, so we need to go to our interested button. The interested button is not on the dialing set, because when it's dialing, we don't know if they're interested or not. We, we need to go to an actual disposition set, so we're going to go here and edit the disposition set. We'll see our main set of buttons, and we've got our interested, so we're going to click on edit. They're interested. Um, we're going to go ahead and set the follow-up email to interested. We can move them to our smoke and hot category. And we'll leave everything else alone. Actually, we don't want them to ask us. We want to actually call the next contact. And we'll save. So based off of what we just did there, we've got our interested button. Based off of what we just did there, we've got our interested button. It leaves a disposition of interested. Uh, it adds a note, they're interested, moves them to the smoking hot category, sends them the interested email, and it moves us on to the next contact. It does not add them to our do not call list and it does not delete the contact. We can add additional buttons. We can add as many additional buttons as we'd like, uh, either on the disposition set or on the dialing set. So that, that's how you add your emails to your buttons. So the next thing I want to talk about uh, before we move on to actually making phone calls is a new feature that we've just added to the system on the settings. Uh, it's our click to present. This is a feature that allows you to uh, have a pre-recorded audio on your system that you can then play to your live uh, to a live answer. If somebody picks up the phone live, you can then play this for them. The best way to kind of give, illustrate how this would be used in, is in like a, a political uh, arena. Let's say you're running for office and you have a bunch of volunteers that are making phone calls on your behalf to try to get you, um, you know, to get you elected. So they're making phone calls and as they're making these phone calls they're going to run into people who have questions about what your position is on certain certain topics and so you can actually pre-record those audios those audio files of you explaining your position on those topics and so when they have somebody who asks about it rather than them trying to explain your position they can just say you know what that's a good question why don't you listen to what he has to say about it? And then they can play that audio file. Um, so anyway, just a brief overview of what that is. You do have to upload the audios into the voicemail section. 
and then once they're in the voicemail section then you can add them to your uh, phone burner library uh, your click to present library <clears throat> and then you'll actually see I'll show you how that works in a dial session so now that we've gone over some of the basic settings let's uh, let's talk about importing contacts so we're gonna go to the contacts tab we're gonna click on import we're gonna agree to the terms and conditions sources we've got our Yahoo Gmail Microsoft Outlook all of these other things but most of the time you're just gonna to go to the other CSV click on other CSV then we're gonna click on choose file okay and then all we need to do is select our um, CSV file that we want to import we can give it a descriptive tag um, in the past we automatically created save searches based off the descriptive tag but now you get to choose if you want to create a save search so if I want to do that I just check that box contact manager folders I can choose which folder I want to put the contacts in maybe I want to put them in my test folder um, duplicates import or don't import duplicates and then we're gonna go ahead and continue now we need to uh, map out how the contacts are going to be imported. So you've got all this information. This this information on the left hand side, this comes directly from the file that you're about to import. So this is not something that Foamburner has created. This is something that is coming directly from your file. And so at this point you're going to tell Foamburner what to import. So you need to look at each of these items on the left hand side and decide whether or not that's something you want added to Foamburner. If it is, then you click on the drop down menu to the right and you select where you want to put it in Phone Burner. So there's several pre created fields in Phone Burner, like first name, last name, phone numbers, addresses, all that basic stuff. Any custom fields that you've created will be listed as an option for you to select. And if, it, if none of those fit, then you can use a custom field. So you can create a custom field. So let's say I don't care about that one, so I leave that as don't import, date. Maybe I want to import date, but I don't have a date field. So I could do new custom field and type date in over here. And that'll create a new field in Phone Burner called date. Uh, MLS number, I could do that. I don't have one here, so let's go MLS number. And I don't have to match what's listed over here. I can name it whatever I want in Phone Burner. I'm creating it. Um, and then let's see maybe I just want to go down to owner name so let's put that into first name or owner name maybe I don't care about owner name let's set that one to don't import because I want first and last name separated so I go owner first owner last and then I've got owner phone put that into phone number and maybe I don't care about all this other information you might I'm just for the sake of this example maybe I don't want any of this other information so I'm gonna leave it all set to don't import but if you wanted to import it you would need to go through and map it all out once I've gone through and looked at all of my information here and some you know this one is an actually is actually a very large has a lot of items in it um, but once you've gone through all of them and you've decided what you don't want imported and what you do want imported this question here is asking about this information on the left hand side these are column headers so I'm gonna leave that unchecked however had it said John Smith or you know actually had phone number or whatnot an actual phone number then I would check that if I wanted to save it as a template so that the system would remember what I've what I've mapped out then I could give this a name I like to do um, I like to use dates on here so that I remember specifically which date I, you know, when I created this, uh, this template. But I'm not going to worry about creating a template on this one, and I'm going to go ahead and import my contacts. 31 contacts imported. Now we continue to our contact manager. We'll see our new contacts listed here, names and phone numbers. Our save search test that we just created. This has our 31 contacts in it we imported them into our test folder I believe that has 67 total contacts in it because it had because it had contacts in there from previous imports now that we've got our contacts imported now we can start a dial session so we select our contacts press the dial session button a dial session window will pop up 
and from here we get to choose our voicemail we want to use during the dial session. We can choose our disposition set. I only have one disposition set in this account, so it's automatically selected, and we're going to continue. At this point, now I just need to call into the system. I need to call this phone number and enter this PIN. For the sake of illustration, I'm actually going to use Skype to connect in, just so that you can see that I'm just using a phone to call in. You don't have to have Skype to make this phone call, but you just have to make that phone call. So I'm calling that phone number. Imagine this is my cell phone or my office phone or my uh, or a pay phone or whatever. It really doesn't matter. I'm just calling that number. All right, so once I'm connected, once I've called in and connected, you'll see on the phone over here in phone burner that it says I'm connected and it'll tell me what my caller ID is and all of that good stuff. Um, now you can't actually hear what's going on here, but when I hit start dialing, it's going to start calling that first contact on my list. I've got my different disposition buttons. And I'm just going to press buttons based off of what I want. So if I decide, you know what, let's move on, I hit no answer, it leaves a note, marks it as no answer, and moves on to the next call. So you can kind of see what's going on here. You just press buttons based off of what's going on. You can add notes live during the session. You've got any custom fields, any custom field data available to you throughout. Thank you for calling Imperial Lakes Pro Shop. Oh, you know what? I dialed the wrong number. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> the click to present is listed right here. So if you have somebody live on the line, you can, you can enable your click to present and play it. Um, obviously they're not connected anymore so we can't actually play that for them but uh, anyway that's the dial session window you can resize it um, it's very uh, very interactive you can schedule a follow-up call when you click on schedule follow-up call it'll open up your calendar and uh, that way you can see when you have open appointment times in your phone burner calendar you can uh, pause your dial session at any time. It automatically pauses when you get a live answer. As you can see, it's paused right now. It's not moving forward until I actually mark it as a dis you know do the final disposition, and then it moves on. So that's a dial session. I'm going to go ahead and end the session. Goodbye. And now we're less, uh, left with uh, you know our call disconnected here on Skype. I'll get that out of the way. And we've got our summary, who we called, how long our session was, how many calls was made, what, what actually happened, all of this good stuff. So anyway, I hope that has been helpful for you in getting your account set up. Now you know how to record a voicemail, you know how to create your emails, you know how to assign your emails to different buttons, and you know how to import and begin a dial session. So if you have additional questions, let us know, and we, hope, we wish you the best.